Welcome to Monday. It is the 11th day of April, 2022. Your Day Weather Podcast brought to you exclusively by Cowboy State Daily, Wyoming's news authority. Visit them at cowboystatedaily.com and on their Facebook page. Well, the weather is going to really dominate a lot of things, a lot of conversations and a lot of outdoor activities and travel plans as there's a lot coming off the Pacific that's going to come in a variety of different forms. Typical spring weather, a little bit of everything coming our way. It's best summed up as stormy weather for the whole region. Now, depending on where you are, the impacts are going to really be different. There's going to be some areas that get a ton of wind and get cold and blustery and very little precipitation. There'll be some in the region that will get a lot of snow and blizzard conditions at times. And there'll be some areas that will get a little bit of in between. But everyone's going to have to deal with weather of some sort, whether it's wind and cold or cold wind and snow and rain uh, or a variety of different things when you put it all together. What we have is a disorganized Pacific storm system to bring rain and snow and colder temperatures to the region. We're going to see significant mountain snows. The entire Intermountain West as well as the mountains of the Pacific Northwest and parts of the Sierra Nevada are going to see some good wet snow to help out the snowpack. Windy and much colder weather for everybody Tuesday through Thursday. We're going to have blizzard conditions for many areas of North Dakota, parts of eastern and southeast Montana, extreme northern Wyoming, and parts of northern and western areas of South Dakota. Livestock interests and travelers, be ready for that. Hazardous travel and livestock conditions will be found in many areas of the western and central United States. From high winds across some of the central and southern Rockies and high plains to the winter storm and blizzard conditions in the northern plains to heavy snow over the mountains and the mountain passes and a lot of wind. It's not going to be nice. I have brought up several times that April is a cruel month and boy you're going to really feel it here over the next five days. We have a nice little swirl of clouds right here across the Pacific Northwest with areas of rain and snow moving into Washington, Oregon, and Northern California pushing into Idaho this morning. What is a little bit harder to detect are there other little swirls, and this is why I'm calling it a disorganized trough. It's just a system that's not going to be well put together, at least over the next 24 hours or so, as it kind of gets chewed up coming into the Pacific Northwest. But this is bringing already some really needed moisture to Washington, Oregon, and Northern California and the mountains of Idaho at the moment. It's going to be sliding in, pushing in a cold front later on tonight and into early tomorrow. And you can already see, this is the latest radar image, and you can see that moisture is coming in to the Pacific Northwest and northern areas of California. Going forward, this is what the National Weather Service outlook looks like in terms of watches and warnings and advisories for different types of weather. And this really shows it well. First of all, we've got winter weather advisories and blizzard warnings. You see the red, this is a blizzard warning. Where you see this pink color, this pink color shows winter storm warnings in effect for those areas there. Across the plains, these are red flag warnings for very high fire danger and wind. There's a big swath of high wind warnings in effect for this part of the United States here as very strong winds are going to be developing on the back side of this low. The lighter shade of blue here are winter weather advisories or winter storm watches. And you can see this into the mountains of Colorado. You can see this here in the Wasatch and then the higher mountains of the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies. You can see very well here on the 500 millibar chart, the centers of low pressure with this storm system. One here, the one coming into the Pacific Northwest, and the one up over south central areas of Canada. What'll happen is they're all gonna kind of meander into this trough with this one being more dominant here initially as we go through tonight and into tomorrow, driving that front through. And you can see this here by noon tomorrow. By noon tomorrow, we've got mainly the, the circulation over Yellowstone Park, another one back here, and this other one up here. Again, not consolidating into one storm. But cold moist air with this trough does get pushed into the northern and central Rockies late tonight and during the day tomorrow. Then by noon Wednesday, the storm is going to be forming over central areas of North Dakota with an elongated area of trough back through here. As we discussed in yesterday's special weather update, this elongated area of low pressure 
is just getting stretched out, not really getting consolidated into a main low until it's over North Dakota by Wednesday. Counterclockwise spin around this whole pattern, just dragging in air right out of central Canada and into the northern Rockies and the northern Plains states. And then you can see the storm really blowing up into a very impressive storm over Minnesota, heading into the northern Great Lakes by noon Thursday. There is going to be a lot of winter storm weather conditions in this area here as we go through the next 72 hours. And this is where travel and livestock interests really need to pay attention. But there is going to be other weather with this storm. And this is where it's going to get into the mountains of Wyoming and Colorado, the Wasatch, the Yellowstone area, the Wind Rivers, the Bighorns, and then look at the heavier moisture across North Dakota, southern Montana, and northeastern areas of Wyoming. So along the Bighorns from Sheridan to Buffalo, out to near Gillette, then up into southeastern Montana, then into North Dakota, then eventually here into Minnesota later on. Look at this heavy moisture here. They really need it. This is a really nice shot of moisture, needed moisture, for Oregon, Washington, Northern California, and into Idaho. We're going to see a nice little snowpack boost from this storm, but notice the downslope area, I call it, right here. We really need moisture here. But unfortunately, with the storm tracking north, this is in the downsloping part of the storm, and this is where there's going to be a lot of wind here and a lot of wind on the backside of the storm here. The snowfall amounts are going to be very impressive. This is why we're using the B word, high winds and heavy snow in this region here. You get east of the divide into the downslope zone, and you're just not going to get any moisture. Mountain-wise, a really good April storm to get that mountain snowpack a bit of a boost. Look at these winds gusting with this system over the next 90 hours. High winds along I-70, I-15, Interstate 80 from Wyoming into the Great Basin and all the way into California will be hit with winds. And then here are the high winds on the back side of this storm causing the blizzard conditions across North Dakota, parts of South Dakota, Minnesota, and eastern areas of Montana and far northeastern areas of Wyoming. Look at these temperatures. These are temperatures relative to average this is by Wednesday afternoon. Look at all that purple and look, look how cold it is all the way to the coast and all the way into the desert states and in the Midwest. These are very cold April temperatures. There will be places Tuesday night and Wednesday night in these purple areas and some of these blue areas that might hit single digits and lower teens for overnight lows. And I'm not talking wind chill. As we get into Easter weekend, it does look warmer with a more westerly flow, but we do have a Pacific trough and front coming through late Saturday into Sunday that will produce mountain snow, rain, snow showers, and thunderstorms on the plains. So Easter weekend doesn't look as cold, but at the same time, the weather looks to be active as well. But remember, active weather in April means precipitation for some of you. So this is a little bit of a situation where there's, there's going to be some folks benefiting from moisture, but some folks missing out, I'm afraid to say. Hopefully the next series of April storms will be more productive on the plains east of the divide. Look at these temperatures by Sunday, Easter Sunday. This is why, while it is not going to be as cold, it is still going to be chilly through Easter weekend and into early next week for most of the nation. These are temperatures for Easter Sunday relative to the 30 year average. So if you wanna wear your Easter bonnet, you're gonna to have to head down to Texas or the desert Southwest or the Southeastern United States as the rest of the United States gonna have a very cold Easter. Have yourself a good Monday, despite that forecast I just gave you.